Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. So let's start. First thing, let's set up our composition. I'm going to name it kinetic type 19 and I will make it 1080 by 1080, 30 frames per second, 10 seconds duration and press OK. Let's start by selecting our type tool and let's write something. Cool, so when we have a text layer, the anchor point of the layer is always on the bottom left side and we need it to be on the center for this exercise. And to solve that, with our layer selected, let's go to the toolbar and on the anchor point tool, click twice while holding the control or command key. And this action will center your anchor point right in the middle of the layer. This will work for text layers or any other layers that you have. Perfect, now let's align our text so it's all good to go. Still, with our layer selected, let's press R for rotation. This kinetic type is based only on the rotation property. So normally I would make a few keyframes on a rotation property and apply a loop auto expression. And then I will do all the copies and so on. But there is always a better way. So let's do it. Holding the Alt key, press over the rotation stopwatch to open the expression editor. And let's write a few lines of expressions. Let's start with some variables. So var amplitude equals 30. This will be the intensity of the effect that we're going to apply. Higher values mean more deviation from the original rotation. Then var frequency equals 0.5. This will be the oscillation speed, how fast the rotation happens. Now let's apply the oscillating effect to the rotation property. Let's start with the variable var new value equals value plus amplitude times mav period sin open parenthesis time times frequency times math period pi times 2 close parenthesis semicolon don't worry i will give you a quick breakdown so you know what's happening so value is the property's original value that we just adjusted amplitude times math period sin calculates the oscillation math period sin it's a function that generates a wave-like pattern based on time. Multiplying time by frequency and then by math period pi times 2 converts time into the sine function's input. The result is then added to the original value, creating an oscillation effect around the starting point. And then that will be the new value. Cool. Now let's make a quick preview. And yes, it's oscillating and moving nicely. And just like that, half of our tutorial is done. Now let's select our text layer and press Command D or Control D to duplicate it. Then press R to open the rotation property and let's delete our old expression because we are going to write a new one. How exciting! However, before we do that, let's right click over our layer panel and select New Null Object. And we will add some expression sliders into it to control our effect later when we have all the copies. So let's name our null to Controllers and then let's go to Effects expression controls and select slider control. Now on the effect tab, select our slider and press command or control D to duplicate it. And let's give some names to our sliders. I will name the first one delay and the second one scale. And with that done, let's lock the effect tab in place. Let's return to our duplicated layer and write our new expression. As always, let's start with a variable. So var delay slider and using the pick whip tool, select the slider delay in our null object. This variable will retrieve the delay time from the slider control. Next variable will be var base delay frames equals math period round open parenthesis delay slider close parenthesis semicolon. This variable runs the slider value to the nearest whole number to ensure we have a wrong number of value for frames. What does that mean, Marcus? Uh, well, it ensures that the delay is counted in whole frames, not like a frame with a half, which doesn't exist. Next variable, var, source layer, and using the pick whip tool, select the main layer from where we want to take the movement. Another variable, var delay increment, equals, open parenthesis, index, minus source layer, period index, close parenthesis, times base delay frames. So this variable uses the layer index to calculate the delay increment. It calculates how much the delay will be based on the layer position in the layer stack. So layer 1 and layer 2 will have different delays. Next variable var total delay frames equals delay increment. 
this variable will store the value of the total delay frames for this layer. One more, var current frame equals times to frame open parenthesis time close parenthesis semicolon. This is important because it converts the current time into frame numbers, allowing for frame accurate calculations. And then var source frame equals current frame minus total delay frames semicolon. This one will tell us which frame number from the source layer corresponds to the current time after counting for the delay. And because I love variables, I will keep them coming. var source time equals frames to time open parenthesis source frame. This one converts the calculated frame number back into time in seconds, make it compatible with After Effects time-based functions. And now because this wasn't enough, we will add a if and else condition to the mix. So if open parenthesis source time is lower than zero, close parenthesis, open brace, value, semicolon, close brace. So this is if the calculator source time happens before the composition starts, like a negative frame, we will keep the value the same. We're not going to change anything. Meaning like if the calculations make the animation start like in frame minus 10, which doesn't exist, this line will make that's not possible. So it doesn't break the code or breaks our animation. It will make sure that everything starts at the same time, at the frame zero. And with that explained, let's add a else condition. So else, open braces, source layer, period, rotation, period, value at time, open parenthesis, source time, semicolon, close braces. So if the calculated source time is within our composition timeline, get the rotation value from the source layer, then apply the delay to the rotation animation. Meaning it's all good, the animation will work, so I just apply the values. And that's it for the rotation property. Give it a lip review so you can see our beautiful expression doing its magic and nice. Now let's make another one, but this time we'll be on the scale property. So same layer, but this time press S for scale. And while holding Alt, click over the stopwatch and open the expression editor. Don't worry, this one will be shorter than the one before, I promise you. So let's start with the variable, var scale slider and using the pick whip tool, select the scale slider of our controller null. This variable will fetch the scale value from the scale slider control, which will then adjust the amount that each layer scale will change. Another quick variable, var base scale and using the pick whip tool, select the scale property of our main layer. And this variable will get the initial scale value, width and height of the primary layer. Another one, var scale increment equals open parenthesis index minus this comp layer open parenthesis controllers close parenthesis period index times scale slider semicolon. This variable will calculate the additional scale based on a layer's index. And to finish, open brackets base scale open brackets again zero close brackets plus scale increment comma base scale open brackets one plus scale increments and close brackets, and semicolon. This line applies the calculated scale increment to both the width and the height, resulting on a scale of the layer. This will make the layer scale up or down from its original size, based on its position on the layer stack and on the slider settings. And one more thing before we design our main visual, let's open the text property from both layers and link the source text from the second layer to the first one. We need this in case we change the text in the first layer and this will update the change in all the other copies. And that's it, no more expressions. Now it's time to make this typography look cool. Let's create a new solid for the background and let's make it light gray. Then let's change the color of our duplicated text layer to black. And with that done, let's duplicate the copy and change its color to white. And give it a little preview so we can check how is it looking. Then select the two duplicated layers and press Command or Ctrl D to duplicate them and move them under. And then select the four layers and do the same thing. And then the eight layers and do the same thing again. Do this until you feel you have enough copies for your visual. Keep reviewing and adjust the delay and scales values in your slider to find the best visual for you. And yeah, let's give it another preview and it's looking great. And all of this without any keyframes and it's fully controllable just by two sliders. I love it, I hope you like it too. Anyway, let's watch this for a little bit longer. Nice, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe and check my other kinetic type tutorials. And that's it. I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.